Next, Mr. Chameleon and the case of the target for murder. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly clever disguise, which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Case of the Target for Murder. Sometimes, even the most fashionable of nightclubs can be a meeting place for criminals and near criminals. And such a thought is obviously crossing Raymond Townsend's mind as he sits in the club regal with his wife, Roxanne. And he says to her nervously, I can't see why you persist in it, Roxanne. Persist in what, Raymond? Wearing a fortune and jewels to places like this and making yourself a target for robbery and even murder. My old man gave me these sparklers when he hit oil, and I love them. Besides, jewelry is made to wear, and I'm going to wear mine. I've told you time and again how gangs of hold-up men have spotters in these places, how they, how they tip off their confederates, how women like you have followed home. Oh, let them follow me. I'm not afraid. Every day the papers have stories where public display of jewels leads to murder. Say, what makes you so scary all of a sudden that something may happen to me, Ray? You haven't been acting particularly loving to me lately. What's it all about? Never mind that, Roxanne. What I'm leading up to is... Wait a minute. Look over there at that man in the corner staring at you. Oh, that red-headed guy? Well, what about him? Let him stare. I've got a hunch he's one of those spotters I've been telling you about. Oh, come on, Ray. Be your age. Listen, Roxanne, I've got to go down to the ship to see Harry Atkins off tonight. I'm late now. But I'm going to phone the Dalton Detective Agency to have one of their men see you safely home. I can take care of myself. I don't need any bodyguard to get me home. I'm no hothouse orchid. I said I was calling the Dortland Agency, and that's that. I'll be right back, Roxanne. Oh, Ray! Oh, of all the nonsense. Good evening, Mrs. Townsend. And how are you this evening? Oh, what? Don't you remember me? I'm Cedric Barker. This is my friend, the Count of Normandy. Madame, it's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, the last time we met was at Mrs. Hayden White's reception. Oh, of course, of course. Now I remember. Um, sit down, won't you? My husband will be right back. Oh, uh, he's coming back, is he? Yes. We thought he'd left and we might have the privilege of taking you home. A very great privilege. Oh, well, thanks a lot, but... Oh, here's my husband now. Oh, Ray... You remember the Count of Normandy and uh, Mr. Barker? Yes, I remember them. Uh, we came over to compliment your wife, Mr. Townsend. You're a very lucky man to have such a lovely wife. Thank you. Well, uh, good night. Good night, Madame Townsend. Good night. Ray, did you have to be so rude and unfriendly? I've heard stories about those two. They're phonies, Roxanne. There's something crooked about them. You make me sick. They're gentlemen. <laughs> I'd rather go home with them than with some cheap detective. Roxanne, you're going home with the detective. Oh. The daughter agency is sending over a man named McCarthy. I have to leave you now, but he'll be along in a few minutes. I'll be home at about 12. And shortly after 12, in the Townsend home in the East 60s, we find a frantic Raymond Townsend reaching for the telephone, saying hysterically, Operator! Operator, get me the police! Yes, the police! My wife has been murdered! And less than a minute after that call, we hear the commissioner of police phoning the astute and dreaded detective, Mr. Chameleon, at his home. Oh, Chameleon, this is the Commissioner. 
Uh, what's up? Well, Mrs. Roxanne Townsend has been murdered. Her husband just reported finding her body. Uh, what were the circumstances? I don't know. He was so hysterical, they couldn't get anything out of him except that his wife was murdered. You'd better get out there right away, Chameleon. Right you are, Commissioner. Uh, tell Detective Sergeant Arnold to meet me there. I'm leaving now. <laughs> I'm Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. You're Mr. Townsend? Yes, my... My wife has been robbed and murdered. Come in. She's in the living room. What time did you find your wife's body, Mr. Townsend? Well, it must have been a little after 12, Mr. Chameleon, when I came in. Oh. Well, then you and your wife were not out together tonight. No, only the early part of the evening. We were at the Club Regal, and I had to see my partner, Harry Atkins, off to Europe. He sailed tonight. I see. Then I came home and found her here in the living room, just as she is now. Nasty business. Bludgeoned to death. You say your wife was robbed, Mr. Townsend. Uh, robbed of what? Of half a million dollars in jewels that I begged her not to wear in public. As I've heard of those jewels, seen many newspaper photographs of her wearing them. She was the daughter of uh, famous Strike It Rich Wilson, the uh, oil man, was she not? Yes, and she always wore them. Mm -hmm. That's why I telephoned the Dorton Detective Agency and asked them to escort her safely home tonight. I, I was afraid to let her go alone. Had you um, ever done this before, Mr. Townsend? Uh, had her guarded, I mean? No, but tonight I had a premonition something like this might happen. Roxanne objected, but I I did it anyway. Uh, Detective Sergeant Arnold? Yes, sir. Uh, ring up the Dortland Detective Agency and find out what they know, please. Right away, Mr. Commander. Uh, Mr. Townsend, you said that you had a premonition that something like this might happen to your wife tonight. Did anything occur during the evening to give you this premonition? Yes. We were being watched in that nightclub by a very suspicious-looking man. Squat and red-haired. He never took his eyes off Roxanne. Oh. Well, that sounds to me like Red Malone. If it was, you were quite right to be suspicious, Mr. Townsend. The police have long suspected him of being a spotter for jewel thieves. Mr. Chameleon? Yes, Dave. Did you get the Dortland Detective Agency? Yes, sir, I did. They said they sent their operator, McCarthy, to the Club Regal. When he got there, Mrs. Townsend had already left. Uh -huh. So half an hour later, McCarthy phoned here, and a servant, a man, uh -huh. told him Mrs. Townsend was safely home. Who would that servant be, Mr. Townsend? Well, it must be Carter, our butler. He's the only man we employ. Uh, send him in here, Mr. Townsend, please. Very well. Carter. Oh, Carter. Uh, Dave, you get a list of all the missing jewels. This is big-time stuff, and no two ways about it. Do you mean you think a big gang is operating again? I do. This has all the earmarks of the customary jewel robbery. Did you want to see me, sir? I am Carter the butler. Yes, uh, Carter. I'm Chameleon of Central Headquarters. Uh, your mistress, Mrs. Townsend, as you know, has been brutally murdered. Now, why, under the circumstances, did you tell the Dortland Detective Agency tonight that she had returned home safely? Because I thought she had, Mr. Chameleon. Did you see her? No, sir. Before Mrs. Townsend went out, she had told me to retire. And since she did not ring for me when she came home, I stayed in my quarters, which are off the kitchen. But then how, I repeat, did you know that she was safely home? Uh, because I heard her laughing and talking to someone here in this room. Then she was not alone. Who was with her? I don't know, Mr. Chameleon. I didn't hear the other voice. Carter, how long have you worked here? Uh, six weeks, sir. Six weeks? If you fail to answer me truthfully, things will be bad for you. But I am answering you truthfully. I did not hear the other voice. The only reason I was able to hear Mrs. Townsend's is because she had a very loud voice. Uh, she was a bit on the common side, That's sir. That's beside the point, Carter. Ray, Ray, you... is it true about Roxanne? I couldn't believe it when the maid told me. Who's that, Carter? That woman who just came in the front door. I believe that's Mrs. Casella Stuyvesant, who lives across the street. A friend of Mr. and Mrs. Townsend. Oh, Ray, it's too awful and to think I saw Roxanne at midnight. What's that? Uh, Mr. Townsend, will you please introduce me to this lady? Oh, Casella, this is Mr. Chameleon, the famous detective. This is Mrs. Stuyvesant, our neighbor and friend. Mrs. Stuyvesant, what made you rush over here to the Townsend home at this hour? My maid saw the police car and the house ablaze with lights... She rushed out. They told her Mrs. Townsend had been murdered. Oh, 
poor Roxanne. You say you saw her at midnight? I'd just come home myself, and I was drawing the shades when I looked down in the street and saw Roxanne and a strange man coming into the house. What did he look like, Mrs. Thompson? I just caught a glimpse of him, Mr. Chameleon. He was fairly tall, and he seemed to be nicely dressed. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, two men came over and spoke to Roxanne and me at the nightclub. Two men I've never trusted, Cedric Barker and the Count of Normandy. Oh, you've a good eye, Mr. Townsend. That is a good eye for shady characters. The police have never gotten anything on those two, but they're a couple of parasites who prey on rich women. Dave? Yes, Mr. Chameleon? You uh, pick up Cedric Barker and the Count of Normandy, and uh, Red Malone, too. Take them to Central Police Headquarters. And I'll need you there, too, Mrs. Stuyvesant. Me? Yes. And uh, as for you, Mr. Townsend, I will let you hear from me the moment I get a break in the case. An hour later, at Central Police Headquarters, Mr. Chameleon is studying the list of jewels which were stolen from Roxanne Townsend, the murdered woman. And he looks up as the door opens and two angry men are brought in. Mr. Chameleon! Ah, yes, gentlemen. Come in. I heard that you were here. You are Cedric Barker and the Count of Normandy, if that is who you are. What do you want with us? Yes, what do you want with us? What do you know about Roxanne Townsend's murder? We don't know anything. I'm sure, Barker, that you wouldn't tell me if you did until... Until what? Until the heat is put on both of you. The third degree, eh? The third degree? That is for you to decide. In my country... In your country, they'd probably have you in jail. Now, save that for somebody else. Mr. Chameleon... The Count isn't accustomed to being talked to in that way. Well, he will be within the next 24 hours, Barker, and so will you if you're not careful. Now, I have questions and I want answers. So I ask you again, what do you know about Roxanne Townsend's murder? We know nothing. The Count and I know nothing. You know what you were talking to her about in the Club Regal tonight? What was it? What were the two of you doing at her table? What were you asking her? Why'd you approach her in the first place? Just the usual compliments of two gentlemen to a lady. That is all, Mr. Chameleon. Did those compliments refer to the fabulous jewels she was wearing? We didn't even notice her jewels. You're a liar. Jewels? I didn't notice them either. You're both liars. Two petty crooks not noticing a fortune in jewels don't make me laugh. We are not petty crooks, Chameleon. Murderers, then. That it, Barker? Now, mind what you're saying. Did either one of you... Escort Mrs. Townsend home tonight. We did not. Did either one of you ask to take her home? Yes, but she refused. What excuse did she give for not accepting your escort? She said she was going with her husband. Isn't that right, Cedric? Quiet. Save your breath. You're both lying. Within an hour after Roxanne Townsend had refused your invitation, or as you say she did, she was murdered. And the jewels, neither of you noticed, were torn off her dead body. You can't accuse us of murder. You'd be surprised. Take the Sergeant Arnold... Yes, Mr. Chameleon. You uh, put a tail on these two crooks and they leave? Now get out, both of you, Barker and Normandy. That's all for now. Dave, you bring in Red Malone? Yes, sir, Mr. Chameleon. Come in, Red. You uh, know what you're here for, of course. Yeah, your sidekick Dave Arnold told me, Mr. Chameleon. You got a dirty nerve to try and pin that Townsend murder on me. Red, you've got a bad record. And you're a spotter for a gang of jewel thieves. Mrs. Townsend was robbed of half a million dollars in jewels and then murdered. Where did you go after you left the Club Regal tonight? I went straight to Benny Carlisle's and played pool till 3 a.m. So you admit that you were at the Club Regal? Huh? Oh, pretty cute, aren't you? Mm. Yeah, I was there, but I didn't see Roxanne Townsend. It's a lie. You were seen watching her. What time did you take her home? I didn't take her home. I was at Benny's pool parlor. Ask him. Benny's another crook. He'd lie for you for a price. Well, that's not much of an alibi, but you can go, Red. Go? Is that all? That's all. You've told me everything I want to know for now. You mean... Never mind. I said you could go. Okay. All right, Miss Diverson. You can come in now. Mr. Chameleon, Were I... you nervous? I was so afraid those awful men could see me. Nothing to worry about there. Did you recognize any of those men as the one who escorted Mr. Townsend home tonight? I, uh... I'm not sure. Miss Stuyvesant, I think it very odd coincidence that you were looking out of your window at the moment Mrs. Townsend came home. But, Mr. Chameleon... And you still say you can't identify the strange man who was with Mrs. Townsend. Well, perhaps I'm afraid. You have more reason to be afraid by not telling. Because if you tell, we'll protect you. Otherwise, you are at the mercy of those killers. Well, I'm not sure, but it 
could have been Cedric Barker. Will you make a positive identification of Barker? Well, no, I, I, I couldn't be positive. Oh, that doesn't help us very much. Thank you, anyway, Mrs. Stuyvesant. Well, not at all, Mr. Chameleon. And I do hope you find the murderer. Go. Dave. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Detain Mrs. Stuyvesant downstairs for about five minutes while I make the phone call. I promised Mr. Townsend that I'd call him immediately that there was any sign of a break in the case. I'm going to tell him that Mrs. Stuyvesant is ready to identify his wife's escort. Did she identify him? No, but I'm going to tell him anyway. Uh-huh, I get you. And after that, Dave, you and I are going to follow Mrs. Stuyvesant home. Mrs. Stuyvesant's taxi is getting pretty close to home, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, Dave, that's her house right there. Shall I stop the car? Yes, Dave, we'll wait until she's paid the taxi driver. Watch it. Mrs. Stuyvesant's paid in now. I don't know what this is all about, Mr. Chameleon, but I take it you're about to catch up with a jewel gang that murdered the Townsend dame. I wish that were it, Dave, but I'm beginning to wonder if we're not on a completely wrong trail. Wrong trail? Mm Mm-hmm. It may not be a gang of jewel thieves at all, but it could... Holy smoke, Mr. Chameleon. Some guy jumped out at her from the doorway of her house. Just what I expected. Come on. I'll fire into the air. I hope we're not too late. (laughs) Mrs. Stuyvesant, hold him. Don't let him get away. Don't let him get away. He's gone, Mr. Chameleon. Yeah, he's gone. He ducked down that alley between the houses. Mrs. Stuyvesant, are you all right? Yes, yes. I I don't understand it. I I really don't know what happened. Who was that man? I have no idea, Mr. Chameleon. That is not true. Yes, 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 it is. I I can't imagine who'd want to hurt me. Can't you? (laughs) Mrs. Stuyvesant, I think you know as well as I do that your assailant was the killer of Roxanne Townsend. It must be. But I don't know who it is. Mr. Chameleon and the case of the target for murder continues in just a moment. If you ever take anything to relieve an ordinary headache, remember this about genuine Bayer aspirin. Its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system that mothers give it even to small children on their doctor's advice. Now this is important, for it means that Bayer aspirin is something you can take with complete confidence. It means that besides fast relief, Bayer Aspirin also offers you the dependable relief that's important to your health. For Bayer Aspirin is not only ready to go to work in two seconds, but also has an unmatched record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So don't experiment when you're in pain. Take no chances with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, use something you know is completely dependable, genuine Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of the target for murder. We find Chameleon now in the office of the Commissioner of Police, again studying the list of the fabulous jewels which were stolen from Roxanne Townsend when she was murdered. And he is saying, There's something funny about this whole affair, Commissioner. Not a single piece of the jewelry Mrs. Townsend was apparently murdered for has turned up anywhere. That's probably because it's too hot, Chameleon. Yes, but our experience has always been that when a murderer is committed for robbery, the killer's first act is to slip the stuff out of his hands quick to a receiver of stolen goods. Yeah, and we've had every known receiver in town hauled in here, and all under constant surveillance. Yes, well, that's the point, Commissioner. Nothing in this case fits together. Every road I've taken has led to a dead end. You know, it looks to me like the work of that Damero gang. You may be right at that, Commissioner. But if it is, they're working through someone either in Townsend's house or in Mrs. Stuyvesant's. And I propose to... To get into those houses in disguise, Chameleon? Exactly. Starting with Mrs. Stuyvesant's. But in what disguise? In the disguise of a window washer. An Italian window washer named Tony Caruso. Hmm? And uh, while I'm there, I... Oh, wait, let me call Dave. Uh, Dave, you come in here, please. Yes, sir. What's up, Mr. Chameleon? Mr. Chameleon has a new one, Dave. 
He's going to disguise himself as a window washer. And get busy polishing Mrs. Stuyvesant's windows. And Dave, while I am in the house, I want you to phone and give Mrs. Stuyvesant a certain message, exactly as I tell it to you. And so it is that later that day we find Mr. Chameleon in his disguise of Tony Caruso, the window washer, busily splashing water on the windows of Mrs. Stuyvesant's living room. When the door slams open and Casella Stuyvesant appears. Young man, what do you mean by coming in here this way? Who gave you permission to wash my windows? Uh, Scusi, uh, you are the uh, lady uh, of the house. I am uh, Tony Caruso. At the your service? Well, please answer my question. What do you mean by barging in here? Uh, the window uh, washing service uh, sent me. Well, I don't want you today. Madame, uh, I need to work. I got a five bambinos. Uh, I need to work. Uh, your windows need to wash. Well, come back tomorrow. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Stuyvesant. Oh, yes, Detective Sergeant Arnold. How are you? No, I've seen no signs of my assailant. But then your men have been watching my house, so I feel quite safe. What? You don't mean it. Why, that's simply wonderful. Does Mr. Chameleon know about it? I see. Well, thank you for letting me know. And and tell Mr. Chameleon not to worry about me. I'm quite all right. Goodbye. Don't understand it. I, I just don't understand it. Oh, there must be some sort of a mistake somewhere. Yet they so seldom make a mistake like that. I wonder... What are you following me for? I've told you I don't want the windows washed. Why are you... Who, me? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Stuyvesant? (laughs) See, I hear your name. Yes, you... you... What are you following me for? Uh, You uh, window is uh, broke. Uh, Look like uh, weight is uh, missing. Well, I don't care what's missing. Get out of this house instead of following me from room to room. I said get out before I have you thrown out. And that night, on the street before the Townsend home, we find Mr. Chameleon and Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold. And both men have an attitude of alert tenseness, as Mr. Chameleon says. All right, Dave, this is it. Your phone call this afternoon to Mrs. Stuyvesant did the trick. So go to it. I'll see you later. Mr. Chameleon, I'd rather go along with you. No, no, Dave. You'll need it at the other place. And our friends are waiting for me inside. Mr. Townsend, Mrs. Stuyvesant, Cedric Barker, the Count of Normandy... To say nothing of the butler. It looks to me like somebody might get killed in there. Well, if it is, it won't be me. I uh, think the Townsend's butler, Carter, is watching us through the window. See you later, Dave. Okay, but don't turn your back on anyone. Right, on. Good evening, Carter. Good evening, sir. Is um, everyone here? Oh, yes, Mr. Chameleon. They're waiting for you in the living room, sir. Thank you. Well, good evening. I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting. Uh, Look here, Chameleon. You can't pin this murder on the Count of Normandy and me. Just tight, Chameleon, just tight. Everybody shut up. Uh, Please. And uh, everybody have a good look at this gun. If anybody starts anything, I will finish it. In a few minutes, I will leave this room with the murderers of Roxanne Townsend. Well, thank heaven for that, Mr. Chameleon. So these two men, Cedric Barker and the Count of Normandy, are the murderers of my wife, just as I expected. Watch watch what you're saying, Townsend. That's enough from you, Normandy. But are you alone, Mr. Chameleon, to make this arrest? We thought we saw Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold with you outside. You did, Mrs. Tyverson, but Dave has other things to do. Right now, he and two of my men are searching your house. What? They're searching my house? Mr. Chameleon, what do you mean? I mean they're searching your living room. They have a search warrant, Mrs. Stuyvesant. But what are they searching for? The jewels that were taken from your wife's dead body, Mr. Townsend. Mr. Chameleon. This is some sort of a hideous mistake. No, Casella Stuyvesant. This afternoon, Detective Sergeant Arnold gave you false information. He phoned you to say some of the stolen jewels have been recovered. You, Mrs. Stuyvesant, knew that was not possible. You went immediately to a particular panel by the fireplace in your living room. I imagine that panel conceals the safe. But how... how do you know what I did? You weren't there. Oh, yes, I was there. Disguised as the window washer, Tony Caruso. You mean you? 
Mr. Chameleon with that window washer? I was. What a dirty trick. Yes, wasn't it? Mr. Chameleon, I... I can't believe Casella Stuyvesant was an accomplice of these men. She, She's a friend. More than a friend, Townsend. Casella Stuyvesant was your sweetheart. Together you planned your wife's murder. You're talking like a fool, Chameleon. A ten-year-old child could tell you my wife was murdered in a jewel robbery. You mean, Townsend, a murder that you cleverly built up to look like a jewel robbery. And then he tried to kill me, Mr. Chameleon. What about that? He did, Casella Stuyvesant. When he thought you had identified him to me as the strange man who had escorted his wife home when she was murdered. But I didn't identify him as the man. That's a lie. He thought you had, and that was quite enough. First, let me open this package. Oh, what's that? What's in it? The window weight, used by you, Townsend, to batter your wife to death. The instrument of death given you from your accomplice's house, Casella Stuyvesant's house. Mr. Chameleon? Mr. Chameleon. Dave, did you find the murdered woman's jewelry? In Mrs. Stuyvesant's safe in her living room, just where you thought it would be. That settles everything. I arrest you, Raymond Townsend, and you, Casella Stuyvesant, for the willful and viciously premeditated murder of Roxanne Townsend. Take him along, Dave. But, Mr. Chameleon, why did you have my friend Cedric Barker and me here? Yes. Why, Chameleon? Because I wanted to be sure Casella and Townsend had the jewels, and not you, too. I could never quite make up my mind whether this was a jewel robbery murder or a murder to get an unwanted wife out of the way. And I wouldn't put anything past either of you. Come on, Dave, let's go. The target for murder case is over. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. It's only natural that when you have an ordinary headache, you want fast relief. And to find out how quickly Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work, all you need do is test it in a glass of water. What happens to a Bayer aspirin tablet in that glass also happens in your stomach. And the speed with which it disintegrates indicates the speed with which it's ready to go to work. When you make this test, you'll see that Bayer aspirin tablets start disintegrating almost instantly, are actually ready to go to work in two seconds. Hence, they provide remarkably fast relief. So when you need something to relieve pain, be sure of how quickly it will act. Be sure with Bayer aspirin. When you buy, ask for Bayer aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of Murder and the Attractive Shoplifter. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson with dialogue by Frank Hummert and Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. New Lion's toothpaste does what no other toothpaste can. Thousands of laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth reveal that New Lion's toothpaste actually gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands. Brighter by far, in fact, than any toothpaste on the market. Remember, it's not just another toothpaste, not just another old toothpaste with an added ingredient. Lion's toothpaste is utterly new, radically different. It cleans without soap. Polishes without chalk. Lion's toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of Murder and the Attractive Shoplifter next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>